so glad to see you on this morning. We want to welcome you to the New Beginning Church, and we also welcome you to our celebration of Pastor Matthew Alexander Davis, who's been pastoring for 20 years here at the New Beginning Church. So thank you. We will get started. Would you please stand to your feet because we will never forget what Jesus has done for us.
the stars which thou hast ordained. What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visited him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hand. Thou hast put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, yea, and the beasts of the field, the fowl of the air, and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passeth through the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Dear most precious Heavenly Father, who lives high and looks low, who continues to guide us and lead us, O oh Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, O oh Lord, for you have once again lifted our eyes and allowed us to look to the hills to know that all thy help comes from thee, who made heaven and earth. Thank you, Lord. Dear Lord, I thank you for your kind caring, loving, and forgiving ways, dear Lord. That's why we come to you this morning, dear Lord, as humbly as we know how, as we know how, dear Lord, for your ever-loving grace and mercy, dear Lord. Continue to guide us, to use us, to lead us. Fix our tongues, dear Lord. Let us be 24-7 Christians, dear Lord. Not light switch Christians, 24-7 Christians. Dear Lord, I thank you for our pastor who, who is celebrating 20 years of service here at New Beginning, dear Lord. Dear Lord, he has, he has taken on many challenges, dear Lord, and he has guided us through those challenges with success and grace. Dear Lord, I can't thank you enough for all that you've done. You continue to shower us with blessings from above, dear Lord. You continue to be better to us than we could ever be to ourselves, dear Lord. Oh, Heavenly Father, I thank you, dear Lord. If I had 10,000 tongues to say 10,000 times over, thank you, Jesus, it could never be enough. For you have done it all, dear Lord. You make the days, you make the nights, dear Lord. You continue to use us, dear Lord. Oh, Heavenly Father, I love you. I love you, Heavenly Father, for you are the ultimate one, the ultimate teacher, the ultimate surgeon, the ultimate above all, dear Lord. You truly walk it like you talk it, dear Lord. Oh, Heavenly Father, I am so thankful that you are my Lord, Lord God in mercy. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for this church. I want to thank you for the blessings you bestowed upon this church, dear Lord. Thank you for it all, dear Lord. In the name of thy most blessed and merciful Son, Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. Thank you for the heavens above and the earth below. Amen. Amen.
will have a youth presentation. And at this time, we're going to ask Pastor David to come up, please. And would you take a seat? Just have a seat right there, please. Uh, we want to welcome you to YBBC. And what does YBBC stand for? Youth of the Beginnings Broadcasting Channel. We would like to welcome our very special guest with us today. Today we have Pastor Matthew Alexander Davis with us today. He is the pastor of the New Beginning Church. Today marks 20 years of him being a pastor. He was elected pastor on September 7th, 2004. Pastor Davis, we just want to congratulate you and we are excited that you have joined us this, with us today. Um, today, the youth would like to interview you and we know that one time in your life, you were 10, 15, 18 years old. You have not always been a minister of the gospel. <laughs> so we want to dive in into Pastor Davis's life to see what he was like when he was our age, what he was like in elementary school, middle school, and high school, what he was like when he was a teenager. So I will start with the first question. Uh, we will all ask a question and we will give Pastor Davis some time to answer the question. Okay, Pastor Davis, if you can remember, um, what was the first thing you said to Miss Davis? Or what was the first inter interaction you had with her? I said hello. <laughs> <laughs> where, where did you say hello? On the phone. that all you, you, you said it was just a hello? Just a hello, I'd like to get to know you. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, another question, uh, what is your biggest fear? Like for example, me, I'm scared of bugs, like spiders, I'm scared of flying objects coming towards me. You know, I'm scared of that. What, what's your biggest fear? The first one is being interviewed by the youth of New Beginning Church on today. <laughs> <laughs> Really? Well, well, why? Well, why I would say why? snakes. Oh, snakes? Why is that? Was there like... Was yeah, there that was an incident about age eight. Age eight? What happened? Why did they well, we used the old washing machine and, mm -hmm. and you would run the clothes through the, the wringer and then after you finished washing, you would reach over and you grab it and you grab a handle and you dump the water out. And I went to grab the handle and there was a snake about eight feet long jumped up the side of the wall and attempted to bite me. Wow. Oh. Um, thank you. Thank you for, <laughs> for that. OK. Hey, Pastor Davis. Hi, I would like to dive into this and with a hard question. Um, my first question to you, 
is, have you ever done drugs? No. Okay. Okay. My second question to you is, what activity did you do with your first girlfriend? So today is not I went out to eat with family. Uh, oh, uh, that was not your first girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> your first girlfriend. She asked me what I could remember. <laughs> 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 when did you have your first girlfriend? Uh, 1999. So what was her name? Carolyn <laughs> Jean <laughs> Orr. Pastor David, how does it feel to be pastor of the church? It's a joy. Feels good to do what God has called me to do. Mm. All right. And, uh, what was your favorite high school subject? Math in, in English. English more so than math. Oh, so you like English better than math? Yes. Why, why is that? Because it, it dealt with public speaking and preparing you to speak. And I had a coach that really, he was a baseball coach, but he taught English. So he really coached English instead of making it boring. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that was interesting. Yeah. All right. I'm going to keep it simple with this one. Why did they make you pastor? Sister Henry, why, <laughs> why did y'all make me pastor? <laughs> I was the best choice. <laughs> How did they make you pastor? They voted. Okay, what is your favorite color? I didn't hear you. What's your favorite color? Favorite color? Royal blue. Hmm? Blue. Royal blue? Okay, who has been your main role model throughout the years? As a child, it was the late pastor Billy Ray Love. And growing up? Growing up, Pastor Richard Rose, Pastor Richard Booker, Pastor Artis Lovelady, Pastor John Morgan. Your other pastor? Yes. Okay. Pastor Matthew Bell. Okay, the second question. What was your most memorable experience from elementary school? I got an A. <laughs> Which <laughs> subject? <laughs> In math. <laughs> Which year was that? 1969. Okay. The grade level? First grade. Interesting. <laughs> All right. Um, what was the hardest thing about building the church? What was the hardest thing about? Building the church. Building the church. Like physically, financially. Yeah. Physically, it was raining the whole month of June in 2026. I mean, 2006, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. It rained the whole, every day in June 2006, so it made it hard to build a church. Okay, and what about financially? Financially, we were a small group of 22 adults, 18 children. So if we had more money, more souls, and more money, it wouldn't have been that hard. Oh, that's true, that's interesting. Okay, this might be like the hardest question here from everyone. Hi, Juan. What is your favorite candy? Strawberry, Strawberry favorite candy. 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 <laughs> candy. 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 Chocolate. Okay. <laughs> chocolate, 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 and more chocolate. <laughs> Which is the worst thing you did as a child? Uh, they, um, my mom said, don't, do not slide on the driveway. I was about nine years old. In the country, we would sweep the yard, and as we swept the yard, then we would have to wash down the driveway. So we would spray the water on the driveway, and mom was in the back of the house, and she said, do not slide on that driveway. I said to them, well, we already been sliding, so let me get one more in. And when I slid that very last time, off the back of my head, bursted it open, and to this day I can still feel the nine stitches that was in my head. Ooh. Okay, same now for the fifth question. 
How did you propose to Miss Davis? We went to a, we went to a um, piano recital in South Haven, Mississippi that her mother gave. And this was the year of 1999. And after the recital, we got together for fellowship. And as we finished the fellowship, I had about a 20 minute conversation with her dad. And he gave me the ability, he gave me, he gave me permission, permission to propose and I proposed right there on the spot. Mm -hmm. What kind of ring did you get her? <laughs> a very be special cheap, for a special girl. A very cheap ring. It was very cheap. It was very cheap. <laughs> it was a, a very plastic? cheap ring. No, not a plastic ring. It was a gold ring, but it was a basic gold ring. So fake gold? No, it was gold. <laughs> it was gold. How was it cheap then? It was cheap because it was the cheapest gold you can find. <laughs> Gold's not cheap, period. Say what? Gold's not cheap, period. Okay, it was an expensive gold ring. That cost li a little money. It cost a little money. Matter of fact, Ashi's dad sent me to this place to buy this ring. Later on, I found out it was a, what do you call those things where they sell stuff outside? Jewelry. Company. It was a flea market inside. Mm-hmm. But five years later, I upgraded. Mm -hmm. Then five more years, I upgraded. So then five years energy. later, she upgraded. So you had more marriages with more better expensive more rings. I had more expensive rings. Mm. Okay, that proves your worth. <laughs> and that concludes our interview with Pastor Matthew Davis. Thank you, Pastor Davis, for being with us today. Thank you for having me. I enjoy being here. <laughs> Please yeah. call me again. Yeah. I would love to be here. Yeah. And remember, we are coming to you live from YBBC. And what does YBBC stand for? Youth of, of the Beginning, Beginning Broadcasting, Broadcasting Channel. Channel. And to everyone watching, like and subscribe and share. And don't, don't forget to uh, keep spreading the gospel, even on the go.
YBBC. <laughs> Doing their interview with Pastor Davis. <laughs> wonder how did Pastor Davis feel being in the hot seat. We know that um, God has truly blessed us uh, to be here today. He has blessed the New Beginning Church uh, since before the last 20 years, but for the last 20 years that I've been here, God has blessed the New Beginning Church. And we are just so thankful for God's favor on this church because we know that God is the one, he's the one that did it.
I'd like to take this time to introduce our speaker for the hour on today. I would like to say that I met him through Pastor Davis, and I also found him to be a friend. They are God's fearing people. And we had an awesome opportunity to visit uh, the Dominican Republic on a mission trip. And I really got a chance to know Dr. Booker and Sister Booker uh, even better. And I count it a privilege today and an honor to stand here to present him like for you to receive the speaker of the hour today in this celebration of, of Pastor Davis' 20 years of pastoral ministry. And before I introduce him, let me say a saying from my good friend, Pastor Davis, who has once said, he said that if you are leading and nobody is following you, like you're just taking a walk. <laughs> and then he said, New Beginning, thank you for not letting me take a walk. <laughs> and 20 years later, I want to say, thank you, New Beginning, for not letting my friend, Pastor Davis, take a walk. <laughs> At this time, I'm going to present to you the speaker of the hour, the pastor of Little Zion Church, Dr. Richard Booker. Come on, let's receive him and stand as he comes to bring us the word of the Lord on today. And thank you so much, Pastor Clinton, for that uh, uh, presentation of presenting me. And thank you, Pastor Davis, for uh, permitting us this opportunity uh, to stand once again. And uh, I have been blessed by what has gone on. I want to salute our, the young people. Amen. questions. Amen. And uh, maybe they will be able to uh, get us some good answers. Amen. Amen. Um, I'm trying to find my way through what I should uh, do uh, because uh, I don't always know what to do. When I was much younger, I I know, and so it takes me a while to figure 
organizations are identified and how come some of them uh, start with a K and others start with the W. Anywhere on that agenda? Well, I don't know. But I, for the first one of you that figured that out, I have $10. <laughs> 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 got their attention. I might mention it during the sermon, so listen carefully. Um, this is 20 years for Pastor Davis, and to have uh, Sister Davis right along by him, and uh, we are grateful for the work that they have done are doing, and I say that with all sincerity, um, we need dedicated leaders, and as Pastor has said, we don't need folk that's just out for a stroll or a walk, but we need folk that are actually leading folk. pointing folk to Calvary. And that's the bottom line. If we don't do that, then what we do is in vain. But in this 20 years, uh, there has been much sacrifice. I know uh, just by experience myself that uh, there is much sacrifice that goes into this. And very often, um, we overlook the sacrifices that are made. At the time that Pastor Davis ought to be uh, trying to uh, stay in good, as he was trying to do this morning <laughs> with Sister Davis, he got to listen to gripes and complaints from us. Amen. And sometimes when uh, he wants to do things, uh, he's busy taking care of our needs. And so what I think I'll do, uh, because if I miss it on the preaching, I want to hit it in good on something. Uh, why don't we do our special offering for the pastor right now? Can I get a boom shakalaka or something of that? An amen? I said, I said, I said, I said. Why don't we do a special offering? Okay, I figured it out, brother, brother Plant. If I say it twice, they'll hear me. Amen. So we want to prepare now, and I have a check here somewhere that uh, I brought uh, with me to uh, represent in this offering, and uh, we ask that others of you will uh, represent also, and um, do we have the, 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 um, the camera people, can you put the um, ways to give up there? What you do, I see that it says, um, um, this is a special offering. It's on the back of the thing? Okay, well, I don't read well, especially on Sunday. Amen. So let me... Uh, So, yes, the, it's on here, and for those who may be uh, 
listening in or that will listen in later. Um, you may give uh, to that Zell um, uh, account. And please indicate that it's a love offering. Indicate that it's a love offering. Amen. And if you do that, then uh, the uh, finance team will know that this is for uh, Pastor David. Amen? And so let us prepare uh, to, uh, to, to give. Amen. Uh, uh, envelopes are being passed out. If you need one, uh, ushers are providing those. Let us pause for just a moment of prayer. Precious God, our Father, Lord, how we do thank you for an opportunity to express our love to this your servant that serve us so well, gives of himself right along with his helpmate, Sister David. Pray, oh God, that as we give, that we will give an offering not only appreciation, but an offering of love. We might show them that we want them to run on a little while longer. They might run on and see what the end is going to be. We thank you. We give you praises. In Jesus' name, amen. We will follow the instructions. So I Precious God, how we thank you for these gifts that have been presented. We pray, oh God, that it be as bread cast upon the waters. We might find it many days hence to thine honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so very much. Thank you so very, very much. If you will. about Philemon, but he comes right after Titus, and reads right before Hebrews. There is a passage in that uh, book that uh, caught my attention. 
ministry as a pastor. And this morning we will attempt to uh, exegete properly and get the lesson that uh, is in that apply it to our pastor and this celebration. Before we read that, I would just like for you to begin thinking about what it is that brings joy to God what it is that brings joy to God. And if God is our Father, Jesus Christ, the Son is the under-shepherd, those of us who serve uh, under him, it stands to reason that what would make God happy or bring joy to God's heart would somehow transfer to his under-shepherds, his pastors. Let me read verse 7. Verse 7. Philemon. Verse 7, English Standard Version says, For I have derived much joy and comfort from your love, my brother, because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Let us place the pastor in the position of Paul the Apostle, who is writing this letter. And uh, let us put ourselves in the place of Philemon. And let us from the word of God See what it is that Paul said caused him to derive much joy from Philemon's Christian character. God would that all men would be saved. God's heart rejoices at one that receives Christ as his or her Savior. And then to see that individual be discipled and grow into a productive Christian, a 
addressing all of the requirements and the expectations that should pertain to the Christian life. My brothers and my sisters, we are not saved to remain the same. We are not saved just to become window dressing in some church or some Christian organization. But it is expected of us that we ought to live the Christian life. That we ought to walk as Christians, that we ought to deport ourselves in certain ways. And in so doing, we bring glory to God and joy into the hearts of many. What I'm trying to say to you is that the way we as church members live can have a profound effect on the joy that our pastor receives. I'm going to say that again. The way we live and especially the way we treat one another determines to a great extent the joy that the pastor has. Amen. You know, I, I have children. I have children, and I thank God for them. But if there's one thing that breaks my heart, about my children. It's not when they get in trouble at school. I, I don't like that. and I don't like them doing a lot of other things. But one of the things that breaks my heart more than anything is when they bicker with one another. Amen. I, I, I just don't believe that brothers and sisters Brothers and brothers, sisters and sisters should bicker with one another. It breaks the heart of the parent. Help me, Lord Jesus. And if God uh, has placed you, his children, under the leadership of his pastor, and you are like Eudias and Sintachi, don't know how to conduct yourself in the house of God, it breaks the pastor's heart. When I was a young pastor and uh, the folk would, they would attack each other and I kind of stood back and watched that and, and as long as they were attacking each other and weren't ta attacking me, I thought it was all right. Amen. I, you know, go at him, go get him. But, but, but listen, that was very selfish on my part. Amen. Even though it took the eyes off of me, ultimately it hurt my ministry because you cannot do anything with folk that are bickering with one another. Jesus had the presence of mind before he left this earth to pray a prayer. John chapter 17, where we find the real Lord's prayer. And one of the things that I always remember about that prayer, Jesus said uh, to his father, Father, make them one as we are one. In other words, give them the same spirit that you and I 
experience between one another. Give them, even though they are many members in many bodies and so on, give them the same essence that they will follow a, a unity that will bring them so close that they will even mimic Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. All I'm trying to tell you today is if we are to accomplish that that God would have us accomplish, we must find some kind of way to get along with and put up with, help me somebody, folk that may be totally different from ourselves. Let me just tell the story so I don't hold you too long. Uh, Philemon was a wonderful Christian brother. He, 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 he had a, a, a house church. There was a church in, in Philemon's house, and, and he welcomed people in to worship God uh, in his home. He was a good Christian brother. He believed in helping people, and, and uh, he believed in uh, uh, walking uh, even as Christ walked. But every one of us, at some point in time, will be challenged when someone that is unlike us uh, perhaps will do something that uh, will just get on our last nerve and, and, and just spoil our day. And, and we want to put them in place. We want to hold them accountable. We want to do all of those things. Yes, well, Philemon had a servant by the name of Onesimus. And uh, uh, for whatever reason, he stole from his master. Now, you know, we, we, we go along with a lot of stuff. But when folks start stealing our stuff, yeah. help me somebody, we, we get plumb upside down, tangled up, mad. And he stole from him, took his belongings, and ran off to the bright lights and to the big city. Help me, Lord Jesus. Now, that's not so unusual. You know, back uh, when I was growing up, I used to hear Pastor McLennan, the, the, the old folk, talking about when folk had to run off from the plantation. Y'all, Some of y'all have heard those stories. You didn't, you didn't live them. You're not old enough. But they would run off. And 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 uh, uh, go somewhere where boss man couldn't find them. Help me, Lord Jesus. So Onesimus ran off, taking his master's goods. But when he was out there, he happened upon a brother. Thanks be to God that there's a brother somewhere. And uh, this brother was the. the uh, a man by the name of Paul. And, and, and uh, he got to know Paul, and Paul uh, was able to lead him to Christ. Help me, Lord Jesus. Now remember, uh, Onesimus is a thief. He has deprived his master of his goods. He has run off. He's uh, deprived his master of his service. But Paul was able to share Christ with him. I, I, I tell people a lot of times, if you don't want folk breaking in your houses and stealing your stuff, get them saved. <laughs> Help me somebody. You, 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 you share Christ with them. You, you get them to live for the Lord. Amen. If you if you put your 357 down for a while and, and just tell them about Jesus, help me somebody. Uh, instead of him breaking in your house, he might be trying to break in the church. Help me, Lord Jesus. But anyway, here uh, Onesimus is, and 
Paul shared with him. No doubt telling him how that the blood of Jesus would wash his soul and make him whole. And so when he so did, uh, On Onesimus uh, 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 was convicted of his sin, of his crime. And so he goes to Paul and he explains to Paul, listen, I, I'm, I'm a fugitive. I'm running away because I have, uh, I stole from my master. And, and, and I need to get that off of my chest because now as a Christian, I don't want anything holding me back. I want to really live for the Lord. Help me, Lord Jesus. And so what does Paul do? Paul talks to him and, and, and shares with him what it is that he should do. He said, the first thing you do is you, you've already repented. Now what I want you to do is I want you to go back to Philemon and be restored to him. The last thing, no doubt, Onesimus wanted to hear. Amen. You mean you're going to send me back to the individual that I stole from? You're going to send me back to the individual that is no, no doubt angry with me. And there's no telling what it is that he's going to do to me. But Paul, being the great pastor that he was, took pen and paper and wrote a letter to Philemon explaining to him who he was, the, 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 the record is, is it is believed that Paul was the one that led Philemon to Christ. And so they would have a history. And so you know how it is when you, uh, your children get in trouble and, and uh, you, get, uh, you want the pastor to go to court with you. You know how that is. Amen. You want him to go down there and talk to the judge. Amen. Uh, now, if you haven't been there, then... Don't look funny at the ones that have because you're not off the hook yet. But, but, but uh, he sits down and pens a letter to Philemon and reminds him, if you will, of some things that uh, he should be feeling, not as one that has been wrong, but as one that has been saved by the blood of Jesus. He talks to him and, 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 and tells him that I want you now to receive Onesimus, not as a slave, not as a servant, but receive him as a brother. Paul is saying that, listen, if you really want my heart, to be made glad. You will receive him and you will not treat him uh, in a, a bad way. But you will receive him as a brother. When Pastor Davis stands here Sunday after Sunday, Wednesday after Wednesday, day after day, sharing with you uh, somewhere in there, He's trying to tell you that all of you are brothers and sisters in Christ. And you have a responsibility to conduct yourselves and to treat each other as such. Help me somebody. Because what happens, the bottom line is, is that when you do your job, then that makes his job a lot easier. Help me somebody. Uh, it, it, instead of him putting out fires over here and fires over there and settling this argument and settling that argument, he can stand strong and preach to those individuals that do not know Jesus as Lord and Savior. So it's important. So he says to Philemon, 
I have derived much joy. Amen. I, I get a lot of joy. You know, some folks sing the song, I, I, I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. You ought to get joy when you think about how you treat your brother and your sister. Amen. You, you, ought, to, you, ought, to, you ought to get joy not only on what's happened to you, but what you need to do in order to make somebody else's life better. And I'm not talking about folk that's sweet to you. I'm not talking about people that do everything just right that you like just so much. I'm talking about folk that wrong you. And yet you're able to be able to forgive them and to help them to move forward. Paul says, listen, because of your action, I derive much joy. And the reason I can get so much joy is I've watched your love, how you move among the people. You allow them to hold church in your home. You, 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 you help them when they're down and out. You're there to uh, be with them when they are going through their struggles and their troubles. And so I, I get joy just thinking about that. And I know Onesimus, is, I mean Philemon is saying, well, you know, uh, I'm, I'm glad that I can do that, Paul, because I have some wonderful folk that go to the church that I am a part of. But what he wanted him to say, well, what, what about those who are not so wonderful? What about those who are not so loving? What about those that uh, can't wait to get outside of the door and to have some negative thing to say about the pastor? What about those who go home and eat roast preacher around the dinner table? What about those folks? Amen. I know, I know, listen, I know, I know, and I put up a dollar that there's not one in here. <laughs> you see, I'm going to keep them in bed low. But listen, that, that, that listen, that it's not hard. It's not hard for me to hold up a friend. It's not difficult for me to hold up someone that's always got my back. But what about that individual, amen, that has wronged me, or at least I perceive that they have wronged me? Paul said, now listen, I, I know you got a loving spirit, and uh, I, I really get joy when I think about uh, you and how you uh, look at the other saints. I'm refreshed when I see how you move among the people. And so listen, I've got this problem here uh, with one that has wronged you. And, 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 and I'm, I'm, I'm bold enough, Paul says, to come to you in Christ. Now listen, if, if, if I can't plead with you in Christ, uh, uh, you're incorrigible. In other words, I can't help you. If, if, if I can't win you, if I can't win you to, uh, over to doing right by presenting Christ to you, you can't be helped. Help me somebody. I, I can't, I can't uh, present someone else and say, you ought to do it for mama's sake. You ought to do it for daddy's sake. But no, you ought to do it because of Christ's sake. And, and, and Paul said, listen, I can stand boldly in Christ. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It's the power of God unto salvation. I don't have to back down when I present Christ. You know, I'm always right when I stand on him. 
Christ, the solid rock I stand. All the other ground is sinking sand. Listen, I, I, I appeal to you, Paul said, to receive Onesimus. I'm going to send him back to you. But I don't want you to receive him as a servant. He may serve in your house. But I want you to receive him as a brother. After all, you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Now he has accepted Jesus himself. Paul said, listen, there's nothing that I would rather do than to keep Onesimus with me. For no doubt he had learned to serve Paul well. Paul really appreciated his service. But he needed the wrong, I mean right, that wrong that he had committed. And so he sent him back to Philemon. I'm through, y'all. What we need to do today is when those, is when those who are a part of the fellowship Get crossways with us. Just remember that they are our brothers. That they are our sisters. And uh, lest you forget, help me somebody. Uh, just like you must forgive somebody else. Every now and then. May not be as often as it is with me. But every now and then, you need some forgiveness yourself. Help me somebody. Rather than always trying to find parity in the way you are being treated. Sometimes it may be upside down. The old saints used to say it like this, uh, I have to go sometime when I don't feel like going. Sometimes you may not feel that it's fair. Uh, what God has called on you to do. But I try to tell folk all the time that God is not a fair God. Help me somebody. I'm glad that God is not a fair God. But one thing I can tell you about it, that he's a just God. Fairness, yeah, is a scale that uh, sometimes does not measure right. But justice always comes out. God is a just God. And God, when he looks at me, when he looks at you, he doesn't look at us from a standpoint of what have you done. But it looks at us from the standpoint of what did my son do for you. Y'all not going to help me. Uh, we have to understand that, 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 listen, the standard is not on me and how good I can be. But the standard is on him. But it's in him we live. It's in him we move. It's in him we have our being. Ain't God all right? I'm glad today, my brothers and my sisters, that Jesus fixed it for me. And you see, I was sinking deep in sin. So far from the peaceful shore, I was very uh, deeply stained within. I was sinking uh, to ride no more. <laughs> but the master of the sea, uh, he heard uh, my despairing cry. Uh, and from the water 
of the flood. He lifted me. Now say, am I? What was it that lifted me? It was love that lifted me. It was Jesus, very little baby, my rock in a weary land that came down from the courts of glory into a sin sick and a sin cursed world. He died, then he died, not for good people, but he died for bad folk, for folk like me and you. And I'm so glad one windy evening the blood of Jesus spilled down from the cross and washed this old dirty heart of mine. Put running in my feet, clapping in my hand, joy in my heart. And he all right, and he all right, he died. For my sin and yours, I stayed in the grave three days and three nights. But early, early, early on Sunday morning, got up out of the grave in his hand. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? And I get joy living for him. Every time I do a little good. I can't take credit for myself. But I says all because of him. He's the one that gave me grace. He gave me faith. He gave me love that I can walk right. That I can live as well as I do. And any time that I can show grace and faith to one of God's least one, then I've done a joyous act in the sight of God. And every time, church, every time new beginning, that you are able to overlook that nasty person in your congregation, every time you're able to just go on and do your duty, in spite of how others by doing that, you're gonna bring some joy. You're gonna put a you're gonna put another uh, rhythm in his step. You're gonna put another smile on his face. You're gonna put a little more joy in his heart. Because every time you show your Christian character, it busters him and moves him into a position that he knows that he can lead you a little bit higher and a little bit higher. Listen, I'm through for over 20 years of preaching and teaching. What brings joy to the pastor is when he not hear you say, but when he sees you doing those things that exemplify Christian character. Then, rather than going home and complaining to Sister Davy, and I know he does it, we can't complain to nobody else. We, our wives are held captive. And sometimes we can't even wait to get in the car so we can do that little critique. Help me now. But when we do it in a way that brings joy, then that's going to reflect on you because his ministry will be more powerful. His counsel, his grace toward you will be better when he experiences the harmony that he sees among you. You really want to make his job easy? Treat each other better. Don't worry about how you treat him, because if you treat each other all right, you're going to treat him good. Amen. Remember, Christian character is more than just a good feeling. But Christian character is 
being able to make the difficult and the hard decisions and to be able to do it with love, to be able to do it with joy. There may be somebody here today that have never accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. You may have been around church. And you may have been around church folk. You may have grown up in a, uh, in a church home. But you never received Christ yourself. You never confessed him as Lord and Savior of your life. I tell, I tell people that it's simple for you, it's, it's complex for God and Christ, but let me tell you what it is. Jesus, who is the Son of God, no less than the Son of God, gave up a place in glory. He lived in heaven right along with the Father. And he came into a sinful world, stayed here for 30 and Three years, he taught, he did signs and wonders to demonstrate the fact that he was indeed the Christ. And then, as he said, they did not take his life, but he laid his life down. He laid it down so that he could die on a cross. For this cause came I into the world, he said. He died on the cross. He bled blood and water. Water for baptism, blood for redemption. And that blood is streaming down for you and for me. And it doesn't matter how bad we are. Though our sins be as scarlet, he will wash us and make us white as snow. If you have never confessed him, that you believe the gospel, you believe the gospel is true. Please don't put it off. Why don't you come today? Today would be a good day. As Isaiah said in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. You can say on the day that they celebrated 20 years of service for Pastor Davis, I came to Jesus just as I was. Weary wounds. But I found in him a resting place, and he has made me glad. If that's you today, we invite you to come. You may come by letter, Christian experience, candidate for baptism. If you don't have a church home, this is a good place to be. This is a good place. Why don't you come? He feels his son suffering. When he looks at me, it's not what I used to be. But it's who I am in him and who he is in me. Mm -hmm. He sees he see? the blood. God When he looks at me, he sees the blood, he sees the blood, God sees the blood, when he looks at me, he sees the blood had it not been for a place called Calvary I wonder who what or where would my life be Lord I thank you for Jesus Christ your son because now I'm free, I'm saved, because
this time announcements. We are here with the announcements. Um, as we, we would like to wish everybody we would like to wish everybody in September a happy birthday. Uh, Kevin Malo on the 14th, Greg Gore on the 20th, and Patric Patricia Allen on the 29th. We have robotics on Saturdays at not NBC. Robotics are offered at NBC on Saturday morning. If you are interested, please contact Coach Steve Wallace. Turning Hearts Music Ensemble, Reaching Youth for Christ Group Music. Friday night music classes for youth are offered at New Beginning Church on Fridays from 5 to 8 p.m. See Sister Carolyn for more information. Thank you, Pastor Richard Bushman, for helping us celebrate our pastor's 20th pastoral anniversary. May God continue to bless you. May God continue to bless you for showing us kindness. Grandparents Day. We will celebrate all Grandparents Day on next Sunday, September 15th, during our 1030 worship service. Please invite your grandparents and grandchildren to NBC. Grandparents and grandchildren photos will be taken immediately after service. New Beginning Church invites you to Family and Friends Day. Sunday, September 29th, 2024, we will welcome Pastor William Earl Reed and the Mississippi Delta Churches to join us in our celebration at 10.30 a.m. Each member is encouraged to invite five or more guests. You are invited to attend a mental health uh, symposium and networking opportunity presented by Dr. Jocelyn Jones of the Holy Trinity Missionary Baptist Church on Sat Saturday, October 19, 2024 at 10 a.m. It's tea time. Taylor Memorial Baptist Church, Daughters of the King annual, Daughters of the King invites you to our annual breast cancer awareness afternoon tea, October 26 and 11 a.m. Uh, Justin Robertman Jr. Community Center. Sister Carolyn will be uh, one of the honorees. If you are available to attend, please inform Sister Carolyn Davis. Purchase uh, pre-sale tickets 15 kids and 35 for adults. Purchase today at www.tnbchurch.org. Upcoming events, Bible listening and journaling. Tomorrow, September 9th, we start week 37, Colossians 3 through 1 Thessalonians 3. Please continue to listen and study God's word. Prayer request. The scripture says, Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you will receive them. Mark 11, 24. Please keep all of these names in your prayers. And that is it. We have presentations.
good afternoon. Uh, thank you all for coming out and joining us to celebrate Pastor's 20 year anniversary. I can say that because I've been with him, all 20 of them. So thank you and I appreciate you. our pastor. Thank you for all you do for us as a pastor and know that your ministry has far reaching positive efforts that are greater than you will ever know. We do appreciate you Pastor Davis. So from the New Beginning Church we thank you. Don't spend it all in one place. And for I have a little token don't know it, but from Pastor, for all that came out to celebrate his 20 years, we have a little token of appreciation. So each one of y'all will get a gift, okay? Thank you. so much. Thank you, Sister Paul. Thank you. Amen. I want to thank our visitors for coming, and before I go any further, I want to thank uh, the preachers. Thank you. If you are a if you are preaching, we just stand. We just stand. If you are preaching, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, Reverend Della Santiago, come and say hello to us, please. This is our the guy right here that's looking around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Santiago, thank you so much for being here. Just come and say hello to us. Happy anniversary, Feliz Aniversario. I'm so happy to be here. I had to be here. So when I saw when I saw the announcement on Facebook, I just said, you know, I love it, but I didn't tell him nothing because I want to give him the surprise. So blessed to be with you, blessed with you, with all of you, with this wonderful and amazing church, powerful message. Thank you all. God bless you. Yo les bendiga. Thank you. Thank you so much. Peace. He has, uh, he's a member of the Homeless Street Missionary Baptist Church in Third, Third Ward, Houston, Texas. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for being a part of our ministry. He's an active part of our bilingual ministry here at, at, the, at, the, at the NBC, and we thank you so much for being a part, my brother. Thank you, Pastor McClendon and the New Covenant Church. Thank you so much. Uh, Pastor McClendon, they did come out last Sunday when you were out on the beach relaxing and and, and rolling through the sand. They came out last Sunday and they were in, in our service on last Sunday. So we want to thank you for, for being that kind of leader that will lead, lead people to our church and, and allow them to attend and not be selfish with ministry. Thank you so much. Pastor McClendon and I started pastoring the same year and uh, we've been ministry partners for 20 years and I want to I wanna thank him for, for that. Dr. Richard Booker, thank you so much for sharing with us. Thank you so much in the Little Zion Church. Thank you so much, Little Zion and Sister Booker. Thank you. These are our mentors, our friends, our confidants. Thank you so much for, for being a part. I want to ask our youth to stand one more again. Our youth. Thank you, youth and young people. Thank you so much. We have youth and young people like none other. We have youth and young people like none other. Thank you so much for uh, even trying to put me on the spot. I just, <laughs> I just want to say to you that uh, Daddy said to me at an early age, there are two things that if you go to jail for, you're going to wish they keep you in there. One of them was for stealing. If you go to jail for stealing, you, you're going to wish that they never let you out. And when I show up, I can't tell you exactly what Daddy said. You know, that's David's household talk. But he said some things that we couldn't say in the church house. And he said, if you go to jail for stealing, you got a problem. And the second thing he said, if you go to jail for drugs, 
you got a serious problem. So uh, I never wanted anything that would control my mind and my heart. So thank you so much. Thank you, young people, for, for our interview. Thank you, a New Beginning Church. Thank you to the New Beginning Church. If you open your flyer, some of you thought this was a program, but this is a flyer. If you open this flyer, it will show you all the things that we have accomplished together. God has tremendously blessed us with even those who have come down through the years. God has tremendously blessed us. And the question was asked the other day, can any good thing come out of Indianola, Mississippi? I say yes simply because the New Beginning Church has not allowed me to just take a walk. Thank you so much for being that kind of church where we've seen God do so many great things through our church, with our church, and we have definitely been reaching souls uh, for Jesus Christ. Pastor Booker didn't realize it, but he preached all of our slogan that we repeat every Sunday. He preached it right down the line from John 12 and 32. Let's give him our motto, our slogan. We are strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus said, in I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John 12 and 32. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Thank you so much. I want to thank my wife. We got together for Ashi's information. Ashi always want to know what's going on, you know. For 25 years, we've been together for 25 <laughs> 25 years trying to talk about who was your first girlfriend. I, I don't know any other. Amen. Amen. When you, when you get to the point uh, for you, uh, 25 years that God has blessed us with 24 years of marriage. And, and since they have asked, we were blind dates. We didn't have the internet like y'all have it now. So we were blind dates, and I just saw her car going down the road, and when I saw her car going down the road and I heard her voice, I asked her friend, who is that woman, who is that? And then I asked a few other questions that I keep to myself, and she said no to both of them, and uh, I said, give her my number. And boy, pa pastor, uh, pastor, she ran me down, man. I mean, Brother, I went, I, went to, I went to work that night and told Brother Craig Gentry, Craig, boy, it's this pretty little thing from Mississippi. And she's chasing me, and I think I'm going to let her catch me. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said, Brother, she's running after me, man. She's running. And I said, okay, I'm going to slow down just a little bit, and, and I'm going to let her catch you. So I want, I want to thank her publicly for her support in ministry. And much of that you see, that's a good place to clap right there. <laughs> much of what you see is stuff that she's had something to do with. Much of what you hear, she has a lot to do with. And many times, the pressure is coming from her in order to make me look better. And so just like she's standing here now makes me look good, she makes me look good in private as well as she does in private. So thank you so much, honey, for being a, a partner in ministry, for being a support in ministry, and for always being there for, for our church and our ministry. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You want to say something? This is his day, so we just thank and praise God for, for this opportunity. Thank you, New Beginning Church. I'm just going to ditto what everybody else has been saying. Thank you for not letting him take a walk. And I just pray that he will continue to keep his hands in God's hands and just do what God has told you to do so you can do all, be all that you can be. And I want to always make sure that I am supportive. I don't want to be, like he was saying, um, making his job hard. I want to try to make his job easy, and that's what I try to do. And thank you, parents and students. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. To all our visitors, would you stand? All of, Everybody who's visiting all over the room, stand. We have New Covenant. We have uh, Little Zion. We have Holman Street, others who are visiting. I want to thank you so much. Why don't we thank God for them? Amen. Thank God for them. Amen.
Amen. Thank you so much. Brother Craig Gentry is here. There has not been a friend like Brother Craig Gentry. He's seen me in my good times, bad times, and my ugly times, and he's still a friend. And I want to thank God for him. Brother Clarence Robbins is here. Brother Clarence Robbins looked all dressed up. Pastor Booker saw Clarence Robbins. He said, oh, who is that dressed up fellow? <laughs> I said, he cleans up really well. <laughs> thank you so much for, for being here. Thank you for all your gifts. Thank you for money. And thank you for, for the cake. I have a cake in my office that I will move to the room next to me. Sophia, thank you for, for your donation of the cake. I would say baking it and, and putting it <laughs> together and mixing it all up and all that. But I'll let your daddy tell that story, all right? So thank you so much for, for what you do. And uh, everybody in the room is invited to come by and get a piece of that chocolate cake for the month of October, November, and December. I'm going to bag off sweets a lot, a whole lot. I'm going to bag off a whole lot. So this is, the, this is my going out party today. Amen. It's going out today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. The other thing is, one of the questions that I was asked when I was caught off guard is um, about a role model. All the pastors and many others that I've mentioned have been great role models for me. But it all started with Mathis and Rosie Davis in the backwoods of Mississippi. I want to thank my parents for, for just putting work ethics into me and making sure that I stayed in church. I believe that if more parents were like my parents, we would be in a better position than we are in these great United States of America. We weren't given options. We were loved. We were, we were put back in place, and we did not have time out. God has a way of bringing you through some things when your parents are firm with you and they are not your friends. I want to thank my parents for just putting a work ethic in me that says you're going to get it done regardless of who else is not present. So I want to thank my parents for that. Now, Pastor Booker took up an offering, a special offering for me, and uh, it will go where, where he asked it to go. For those of you who are listening online, if you want to give to the New Beginning Church, uh, you can do so by giving by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Our Zelle is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. And you can mail in your gifts to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas. 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. If those of you in the room who have not given tithes and offering today, please feel free. Matter of fact, please do give tithes and offering. Don't leave here with God's money in your pocketbook, your purse, your wallet. Please give by way of Zelle or give uh, to Brother Miles. Brother Miles will be the one that will be collecting for today. We want to give to God's kingdom and and God's church. Amen. So well, before you leave, right after benediction, just come and put your money in the cross. And, and so we can always be fair to God because God is always more than fair to us. Amen. We serve the awesome and the amazing God. Hallelujah. This has been a good day. It is a good day. It is 20 years. 20 years. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And and please take this home with you, share it with your family members and your friends, and brag about what God has done through the New Beginning Church with just a handful of people that are committed. My wife always says that the world is yet to see what one man and one woman can do when they put their faith in God. It is amazing to me what God has done through the New Beginning Church. And as you look through the list, you will see paying off of land. You will see paying off another parts of land. You will see building another building. You will see grand interest. And then August of 2011, you will see that God gave us favor of over $350,000 cut off our mortgage. Let me tell you, you can't negotiate your way through that. It is glory that is to be given to God and God alone. Matter of fact, the man stood here, right here in this area. He said, 
my partners and I are still trying to figure out why we are donating, why we are cutting your mortgage from, from, from a, a million and something down to 650000 And I just kept quiet because I didn't want to break the flow of things. And he said, we're still trying to figure out why we are cutting your mortgage and giving you on the table $350,000 plus dollars. We can't figure it out. And when he signed the paper, and then I got up and I said, God did it. And because God has done it, we will rejoice. We will praise him. See, you got to know when to shout. You got to know when to praise him. Don't praise him because you praise him in anticipation. You got to praise him in silence. And then when it's time to speak up, Solomon said there's a time to speak up and there's a time to be silent. And above all, as you look at this list, you will see that many souls have come to Jesus Christ. Many have been baptized. Many have joined. And many are lifting up the name of Jesus. And for that, I am thankful. I'm grateful to what God is doing. I'm grateful to the friends that God has given us uh, here at this church. And at every turn of tragedy, God raised up people to bless our church. When they pulled electricity out of the ground, I mean, pulled it four feet out the ground, 3,000 feet of cable out the ground, God raised up friends, and they gave us $33,000 that we don't have to give back because God is continually giving us favor. I am reminded that it's not because of our smarts. It's not because we are so spiritual. It's only because of God's favor and God's hand upon our church. And I thank God for it. If you listen to the finance team, they'll tell you, ooh, man, we co we're coming close. We're coming close. We're cutting this close. But every time we cut it close, God blessed us with unexpected blessings. And to that, I am so glad that I'm able to say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, thank you for every moment we move, everything we do. God, I thank you for how you just keep right on blessing us. And we don't deserve it, but God keeps blessing us. And he does it over, and he does it over and over again. And I'm grateful to God for 20 years at the New Beginning Church. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. Thank you uh, so much, uh, Pastor David, for your kindness and allowing us to come back again. Uh, thank you, to, thank you, Sister Davis, for your many years of service and just uh, being there to do uh, a lot of the heavy lifting that uh, enables uh, New Beginning to keep on keeping on. Amen. And uh, thank God for the pastors and preachers. All of you that that here, I've enjoyed being here with you uh, on today, and uh, we pray God will give uh, Pastor Davis and the New Beginning Church uh, many more years of service uh, ministry in this uh, uh, community. Amen. Didn't 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 any of the young people want my ten dollars? Uh, did did y'all think I was lying to you? Well, I mean, I, however you got it, you know. <laughs> Who got it? Ish? What's his, what's his name? Tamir. Ashi. Did you figure it out? Come here, come here. I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> You guys are broadcasting, right? And in some in some <laughs> places, you have, uh, say, for instance, uh, in Memphis, Tennessee. You know about Memphis, right? Have a radio station, WDIA. Okay, here in Houston, you have uh, K. So, 
what, what's that all about? How come one of them is W and the other one is K? And so what, does, what, makes, what divides the area? said arrogance. I'll, 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 I'll honor that, okay? But now here's what, here's what it is. Come on, let me talk. Let's see, WDIA is right on the other side of the Mississippi River, right? If you come across the Mississippi River to West Memphis, the station's over there, okay? So everything on the eastern side of the Mississippi, the call letters, television, radio, starts with a W. Everything on the side of the Mississippi, the call letter starts with a K. Oh. Okay, so, so you get your 10 dollars now. <laughs> All right, he tries, so he gets, he gets, he gets a grade for Trump. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Pastor David said the tithe off of the 10. You know how, you know how to figure that, right? Okay, get your envelope so you can do that, okay. <laughs> Praise the Lord, let us stand. Thank you, Sister Booker. Thank you, Sister Booker. Thank you for that wonderful song. He sees the blood. church say let the church say let the church say May the grace of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, may it rest, rule, and abide with each of us now, henceforth, and forever. May we all respond. Amen.